Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen this absolutely abhorrent and downright disgusting video that features the one and only Rick Ross getting his head absolutely rocked by an alleged Hells Angel? Have you guys seen it? There's a Hells Angel in Vancouver. I guess Rick Ross was performing somewhere in Vancouver and a Hells Angel pulled up there, somehow associated with Drake, maybe not, maybe just a fan, and decided to remind Rick Ross that he was in enemy territory because Rick Ross DJ played the Kendrick Lamar track, Not Like Us, and the fan, the, the fucking Drake fan, the Hells Angel guy wasn't too happy with that song being played in his city and decided to put the beats on Rick Ross and his team. It's a fascinating, fascinating video. Let's play it. There's Rick Ross there. You can see Rick Ross, right? You see the rolls on his neck. You see the chain around his neck. That looks like a choker, but it's not. It's just he's really, really fat. You see him looking at somebody, staring him down, trying to act like he's not scared. To be fair, he is out there with all his jewelry on, to be fair. So maybe he wasn't all the way scared. But this is fantastic as it keeps going on. He's talking. He's saying words. There's a Hell's Angel guy with a man bum, right? He's got the side of his head shaved, completely bored. Think of Jiri from fucking UFC. And he's got a man bun. But he's got a very angry scowl on his face, directing all of his anger and his vitriol towards Rick Ross as he's staring him down also. They're still, they're still communicating. And to me, I don't, I'm not going to lie. In this instance, if that was Rick Ross, I would have fired on this guy already because he's sizing you up. He's looking at him like he's a lunch meat sandwich. This Hell's Angel guy is not jump. He's not ramping. He's not just barking at him. He's he's sizing Rick Ross up. He's looking deep into his soul to figure out if this guy's really about it. Does he live? Really live his raps? Is he gonna pull out at all? Is he gonna get with it? If I was Rick Ross, I would have just fired on him. Just 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 in a pure fight or flight thing. Fuck it. But Rick Ross wasted too much time. Didn't do it. And the guy obviously got his punch in before Rick Ross could ever figure out what's going on. Want to bang you out? Boom! <laughs> hey, I love how the punch came right on the beat. Kind of on the beat. At the A minor bit. Yo, that was a proper bang to the side of the face, you know? No reply. Boom! I start scrapping. Everyone's on top of each other. And the saddest thing about this, the saddest thing about this, Rick Ross does that thing that people do when they pretend like they want to fight, but they don't want to fight. He kind of jumps in, but then kind of jumps out and doesn't really get involved. And the saddest thing about this whole thing, you know what the saddest thing is about this whole thing? The security guard gets packed out. The security guard gets the beats on him. He's literally dizzy he's concussed the security guard who did nothing wrong he didn't play the track he did nothing wrong he's not the one that that was the aggressor and got in the face of the hell's angel dude he wasn't the one barking he was actually trying to calm everything that was going on he got absolutely beaten beaten into a concussion i feel so bad for security guards with dreads you'll see him in a minute the really big security guard he gets absolutely tucked in <laughs> There's, look, look at Rick Ross. Look at Rick Ross. Look at Rick Ross letting himself get held back. Let himself get held back to, or let himself get held back. He's standing behind somebody. He's doing the Scott McTominay. Rick Ross is doing the Scott McTominay. He's acting like he's in space. He's acting like he wants the ball, but he doesn't really want it. He's standing in like it's weird no man zone. That's what Rick Ross is doing. Rick Ross is doing the Scott McTominay right now. <laughs> Look at the security. Look at the security. Bang. Oh, look at the security on the floor. Now look at the security. Look at the security. Look at the security get beaten. Watch the security get beaten. Kicked in the head. Punched. Look at them. Three people on the security guard. Where's Rick Ross? All three men. Look at all these three grown ass men beating the 
crap out of the security guard while he's on one knee. Once the the Hell's Angels kicking him in the head, white t-shirts punching him, uppercutting him in his forehead. Another one's punching the guy in the back. Where the fuck is Rick Ross? Where is Rick Ross in this picture? Why is a security guard getting tumped in like this? Where is Rick Ross? That's what I want to know. Where is he? That accent is so funny hearing them say, this is my city, nigga, what's up? In that, in that, I can't even say what the, the Canadian Vancouver accent is, but it's just funny to hear them screaming that while they have that accent. But, you know, it's just proof that anywhere in the world, nothing is sweet. Just because these guys have that funny accent, just because they leave where they live, you don't ever think it's going to be sweet. It's never going to be sweet, especially when, you know, you live in a place where, because I, I can't think of many places in the world where motorcycle gangs are quite prominent and actually have a hold on like the underworld, like actually legitimately. Because a lot of motorcycle clubs are just, you know, they like to pretend like they're hard, but from what I've read and from what I remember reading and watching on random YouTube documentaries was that the Hells Angels, especially in Canada, they're actually heavy. You know what I mean? They actually move pretty heavy. They're actually connected. They're actually, yeah, I, I know what you mean, Z. Big up Z in the stream. Yeah, they're all over the world. I know what you mean they're all over the world, but... In Canada, like, they are, they're the guys, you know? Like, they're the guys, the guys, the guys. So for Drake to be connected with them slyly is really interesting to me, as I'm not going to lie, it's kind of cool. Because I think he's got, I remember seeing a picture of his garage. Doesn't he have some really cool Hells Angel bike? He's got a bike. Don't know what brand it is, but it was made by, it was given to him by somebody from the Hells Angels. It's like a really cool one. I forgot what the look of it was. Maybe it was like baby blue or something. But regardless, like, it's pretty insane that Rick Ross would go to Vancouver without any protection, right? Without no protection, without no fucking protection, just on his own. Playing that song with his DJ and think everything will be sweet. It's absolutely insane. But I feel so bad for security guard, man. Look at the security guard. Look at security guard. Look at him. He's staggering. Doesn't know where he is. Bless him, bro. Don't get me wrong. He's kind of big for nothing, right? Standard American security guard for a rapper. He's basically big for nothing. He can't fight. Doesn't look like he can run or jump. Doesn't look like he can punch. But, you know, it's the size that matters. But bless him man he looks so disoriented he looks so flustered he looks like he's in pain he's probably looking for his client his client's long gone he probably already jumped in his private jet he's nowhere to be found rick ross what's up dog you're in our fucking city what's up you're in our city what's, what's up? up they're still going at him every day i'm hustling oh there we go there's, there's rick ross there the guy said every day i'm hustling and look here rick ross in the background here rick ross in the background Every every day, here across in the background, the guy says every day I'm hustling, and he goes every day, bro. Your security guard just got tumped in, and you're running away. You're not fucking city. What's up? What's up? Every day I'm hustling. Every day. What's up? Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. What's up? <laughs> Honestly, the security guard is a fucking G, by the way. He just got tucked in. He's probably concussed, doesn't even know what his birthday is, gets up and still goes to do his job. I hope he got paid. Hope he still got his invoice fucking paid. The security guard got absolutely tucked in, got up, dusted himself off. He's probably still dizzy, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know his bearings, and still he's standing in front of Rick Ross. There's Rick Ross there. Look at that body. He's been. How long has this guy been working out? Look at his fucking belly. How long has this guy been working out? Jumping rope, hitting pads in the gym. Like, look at him. Look at him. Look at that stature. Look at that shape. Oh, Rick Ross's boy tries to tries to steal on the guy by throwing a bottle at his head, but he's not really with it, to be fair, because if you wanted to hit him with a bottle, you could have. I think he was worried about catching an M charge. If you want to hit someone with a bottle, you can hit them with a bottle, right? You can even stab him with a bottle. Just, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not hard, but he didn't really want it. He didn't really want to hit him with a bottle. Kind of just swung wildly. Yeah, that wasn't good enough, man. If you wanted to hit him, you could have got him. That wasn't good enough, man. That wasn't good enough. 
see me again, nigga. What's that shit? Mech mob. What the fuck is mech mob? I wonder what mech mob is. Oh, oh, is that a DJ? Is that the DJ? I think that might be the DJ, right? No, that or the guy with the in the, with the dreads with the dread hat on. Oh my god, here we go, here we go. Look at this guy get punched up, smash, and again, everyone's getting beaten up again, including the security guard and these two new guys. But where's Rick Ross? This is part two of the fight. People are getting beaten up against the fucking wall, against the side of the barriers and shit. But Rick Ross is nowhere to be found. Boom. Security guard gets punched again. <laughs> Honestly, I feel so bad for these people, man. I feel so bad for them. Big up um, Assad. Big up Assad. What's Assad saying? Um, actually, this might come through because I think my TTS is still on. So bear with me, Assad. It might actually come through. Bear with me a second here, Assad, before it actually comes through. And then we can do the ting. But big up Assad. Big up Assad. Um, and actually, let, let me load up the other video, actually. Let me load up the other. Because the other one's really good as well. The other one's actually just as good as this one. The part two of this fucking beef is absolutely hilarious. So that's part one of the beef. Still, no Rick Ross. He's nowhere to be found. He's just letting everybody else kind of handle his beef. And then the other part is really, really sad because somebody looks like they get slayed on the floor. Yeah, big up Assad. The Canadians found the one guy they could press. A fake drug dealer who's obese. The Canucks picking and choosing <laughs> Lamel. <laughs> the Canucks picking and choosing. Yeah, exactly. But it's a good thing. But you know what? I find it hilarious and I, why I find it a good thing, Assad, and everybody else. Big up Assad disease. Rick Ross was never involved in his beef. He got himself involved. This was never Rick Ross's beef. This was between Kendrick and Drake. If anything, um, The weekend and maybe Future had more of a point to get involved in this beef, and maybe even Travis, and maybe even Ye, than fucking Rick Ross. Rick Ross had no business being involved in the beef. He inserted himself in it, and now he's getting packed out. This is actually a good lesson. He's getting punched in the face with no reply, and he's getting his whole crew absolutely stampeded and you know and kicked about on the floor in vancouver and shit because he tried to insert himself in a beef that had nothing to do with him if you remember correctly he had nothing to do with him the beef had absolutely zero to do with fucking rick ross but he wanted to get involved he felt like he was part of the whole thing that was happening and shit now look what's happening now your whole crew is getting their fucking asses handed to them in fucking vancouver of all places come on brother a place that you would least expect out of the place where you're getting pressed and not even by drake's people allegedly these only the people that are allegedly connected to drake they're kind of like associates maybe or friends or just fans let's say they're just fans who just think nah fuck rick ross <laughs> how dare you play this song <laughs> and they just want to beat him up imagine it's not even drake's actual crew could you imagine how embarrassing that is? It's not actually Drake's crew. It's just some fans who just fucking hate the fact that, you know, he's trying to insert himself in the beef. And like, nah, 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 We're not playing with that. We're not having you come to our fucking city and play on our head top with our goat. This is our guy. You know what I mean? You're not doing this. You're not going to do this. Not here. Not in our city. Especially when they don't even respect his gangster or whatever it may be, right? But the second video is probably worse. So Big Up Asada Z's, right? But the second video is probably worse. The second video is legitimately worse. Legitimately worse because you see somebody get splayed on the floor. Somebody gets splayed on the entire floor. That's the sad part about this video. Part two of everyone else. Again, everyone else fighting. Everyone else is Kung Fu fighting except for fucking Rick Ross. He's nowhere to be found once again. <laughs> Shut up, girl. Look at the guy on the floor. There's a guy on the floor. There's a guy on the floor. He's Jordan's 
facing up like you can see the soles of his anytime someone can see the soles of your trainers you probably lost a fight if your shoe falls off you probably lost a flight fight sorry if you're bust lifted busted you probably lost a fight if you can't close your eye you probably lost your fight if your jaw hurts you probably lost a fight this guy is comp his whole soul <laughs> his shoe is facing us and rick ross is nowhere to be found fucking hell man He's just out, out cold, whoever that guy is, out cold. Look at that, lifeless. Somebody get him to the car, yo. He's gonna die. What? He's gonna die. <laughs> Where's Rick Ross? He's getting carried. Oh my god. You just wanna hang out with Rose. You wanna be his weed roller and shit. You wanna have a good time. Have some Belvedere, get some slags to come back to the hotel, smoke some joints, hang out, have a good time. And now you're being carried back to the car, unconscious. <laughs> you're being carried back to the Maybach. <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> Honestly, this is so unfair, man. This is so unfair. I feel so bad for this guy. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Fucking hell. Absolute disgrace. And Rick Ross is still nowhere to be found. And Rick Ross, for some reason, decided that it was a good idea. After everything that happened, he posted, I think, a picture of himself in the private jet looking all spanky. And in the recent picture that he posted is this picture, courtesy, I think, of the ac academics on his Instagram account. He's somewhere smoking a joint with a money phone. And I don't know about you guys, but when did, when did losing a fight not be embarrassing? Like, when did it not become embarrassing to get even if you're like a global rap star, you're a multi-millionaire, when did it become okay to get beaten up? When did it become okay to get punched in the face and not reply? And then jump on Instagram and start showing off your money, like, like, like that's a cope, like, that's okay. I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever lost a fight, and I've lost many a fights across my number of years on this fucking spinning globe, hurtling through space. And I don't know about you guys, but if you've lost a fight, especially if you've lost it in embarrassing circumstances, that shit dev never leaves you. I think you can ask most real men who've lost fights. They could probably describe to you in great detail a fight that they lost when they're in primary school. They could describe to you a fight they lost when they're in secondary school, a fight they lost when they're in church, a fight they lost at their first job, a fight they lost at football. They can describe a, in detail fights and it doesn't leave you until maybe until maybe many, many, many years into your old age and shit. So the fact that there are some guys out there who lose fights in the way that Rick Ross did in such an embarrassing fashion, gets his whole crew beaten up, and then you jump on Instagram and start flashing your money, start flaunting your private jet, as if that kind of like, you know, makes it okay that you got beaten up. I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. Because if that's me, and that happens. The first thing I want to do is get in the gym. Maybe I want to show a video of myself hitting the pads. Maybe I want to show my video of myself, you know, doing the fucking double leg like Brendan Schaub or something. But the last thing I'm going to be doing is posting a picture of myself with money and a private jet. What's that going to do? That clearly didn't help me when I was getting my face punched by a biker in Vancouver. It didn't help me. That didn't help my crew when they were getting kicked in the face by random Drake fans at a fucking concert that I was performing at. And there also needs to be something to be said for the fact that Rick Ross is performing in spaces like this anyway. Is this maybe proof that he's not a big of a deal as we think he is? The fact that Rick Ross is performing in places where he's so accessible to people in this fashion. What type of venue is this anyway? Rick Ross is meant to be a big star, right? Why is he performing in venues where as soon as he gets off the stage, he has randoms surrounding him? There is no like separation between like the general public and the backstage area where he's meant to be with his crew and shit. What type of venue is this? What type of festival is this? Is this like a budget thing that he's performing at for a couple of dollars and shit? Maybe he's not as rich and wealthy as he seems to be. But I don't know about you, but losing a fight should always be embarrassing, especially if you're Rick Ross, because in this particular circumstances, he got himself involved in the beef that had nothing to do with him. Drake and Kendrick are the ones that are beefing and warring. If this happened between Drake, Drake, sorry, and Kendrick Lamar's camp, this would make all the sense. 
But imagine Rick Ross getting beaten up because he decided to stick his nose in and try and have a problem with Drake just because he wanted to like get some motion going for him as well. And everybody forgot about his record. I haven't played it or listened to it since it dropped. I don't give a fuck. If anything, it's kind of tainted a little bit of his, you know, standing with me because I was always a big Rick Ross fan. But when I saw him essentially clout chasing the beef, I was like, Ugh, you're, what are you doing, bro? It has nothing to do with you. Why, why, why are you getting involved? Especially considering they, you know, they've got a decent musical relationship anyway. It's like, what the guy, what's this guy doing? Are you all right, mate? You're never going to have another number one again on your own without fucking Drizzy helping you out. What the fuck are you doing? Honestly, man. What an embarrassing situation all around. Absolutely, utterly embarrassing. But I feel mostly sorry for the crew. I feel mostly sorry for the crew of people who were holding it down and then Rick Ross completely abandoned them. But again, typical not to be not to be surprised when it comes to these type of people. 